Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Link Baptist Church. Today is March 7th of our, of our Lord, 2021. It was approximately a year ago that we shut the church down, it per se, if you will, with no fellowship and no more worship. <clears throat> Excuse me. When COVID-19 really invaded America. So it's only fitting that um, now we're, we're back a year later and we can look back, we can reminisce on what was, what is, and what will be. And people, that, that, that should be a common denominator in your life. Look back on what was, what is today, and what will be, Lord willing, with our future. i got a couple of announcements I want to make. Mr. Joseph Atencio passed away. On March 3rd, that is the uh, Fernandez uh, Santanas and AJ and Michaela's grandfather. He used to come and sit in the back with the wheelchair, Alicia's dad. But he passed away on Wednesday, March 3rd. His funeral will be this Wednesday on March 3rd at Jones Brother Funeral Home. We know it's going to be Wednesday, uh, March 10th. I just don't know the time yet, but Lord willing, I let you know as soon as I get it. Um, I'll let the church know. But we are going to eulogize him. And uh, the burial was going to be in uh, at the military facility. So we're going to eulogize him one day. Then we're going to take the body the, the following day to, to eulogize him. But we're going to ask everyone who, who can make it to try and be supportive of, of these children. They're having a hard, really hard time of dealing with it. Also, Alicia's an excellent time to to fellowship with her and to witness with her about the goodness and the kindness of Jesus. <clears throat> Joseph Atencio. So we're going to have that next week, Wednesday, that Jones brother and I give you particulars or later. Second announcement is that leadership meeting is Saturday, March 13th. Next week, Saturday at 9 a.m. It will be on the church Zoom and tune in radio. We do not do the leadership business on Facebook Live. Everyone is invited and encouraged to join in. Uh, if, you, if you don't know about us here at the link, you're more than welcome to come to our, our meeting. Everything's kind of up front. We're transparent uh, with, our, with our ministry. And uh, we are preparing for Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, which is April 4th. And it's one of the most sacred days and times on the Christian calendar. And that being said, we're going to make sure that uh, the world observes Christmas and we observe Resurrection but the resurrection of Christ is where we get our power from. So we really want to make sure April 4th, I think it is, the first Sunday in, in April is Resurrection Sunday, which the world calls Easter Sunday. And the church has not fully opened up, but we will take weekly calls if you want to join in person. Please call and let us know when, so we'll know we have availability. We do have some room in here now. That, um, that we can allow people in. We, we got right at about 20 a day, 19, 20 a day. Uh, I think we can accommodate probably 30, maybe 40, stretching it. Uh, but we can definitely have about, thir about 20, 30 people in here to come in. If you want to come, the only thing we ask you to do is please call and ask us to uh, make arrangements so we can make sure we got enough seats out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next down, Terrence, please go to our YouTube page now and subscribe. We're building our online presence. Every church, and you know, the church of old is kind of gone. There's a new normal. The link has got to have an online presence. And that being said, said we're asking people in the church who are, who are sit under authority and who are members of the church, if you would open up your Facebook pages, you say you can't sh have a party anymore, right, Pam? But you can share with people. I don't know how that works, but y'all know the language that I'm trying to use anyway. But share with people, you can't party with them, <laughs> but share with them so that the word goes out to the world. That's what it's all about. We, we're still called evangelize, so we want to evangelize the word. So do your part in trying to just share with the word. There's no telling who we might reach or who just might need to hear your voice or a voice from the Lord or an apostolic voice when someone speaks or, or just the word of God, how that will transform somebody's life. And last but certainly not least, we're updating our church directory, so please message us or text us and or call us at 478 390 501 
that is not the church line, but that's the church text line. That's not the main line of the church, but that's the number that we're asking you for the church cell phone, 478-390-0501. Please, we want to update direct, the directory and a few <laughs> directory. <laughs> Some words. <laughs> Slow down. Yeah. But we're, we're inviting you if, you. if you don't have a church home and you want to talk to us about uh, being a part of what God is doing here, let us know. We'd love to talk with you. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Kim. Good morning. Um, I got this card. We just have a few words for you. Couldn't hear you. Do speaking to Mike. We just have a few words for you. All right. God has. Ooh. <laughs> God said, "I will give you pastors according to my heart." which shall feed you knowledge and understanding. Fortunately, God has did just that when he sent us Dr. Kenneth McMillan, our pastor Ken. First Timothy 5 and 17, let the elder who rules well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. God has given you a job and in 18 years of service, you have not strayed from your path. So continue to fight the good fight and remember the pastor's creed. Amen. I won't give up, shut up, <laughs> let up until I have stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, give till I drop, preach till all know, and work till he stops me. Amen. On the behalf of the Link Baptist Church, and, and the, the missing link ministry, ministry we, we present, present to you this with the gift, gift of appreciation. Amen. Thank you all very much. I, I didn't see that one coming either. But thank you. I mean, you know, listen, guys, I, I think this year, Minister Ron, that um, the Lord placed in my heart to do this because it's, it's not church as usual. And I think I'm, I'm grateful for your gift, but I also want to give you a gift that I'm humbled to say to the baby pastor this bunch of believers right here. And I didn't say bye to y'all a bunch, so, you know, <laughs> I'm grateful. I, I am humbled and I'm grateful to pastor a loving bunch of people. And I'm actually forgiving when I get a little too high because I get high and I get a little low. But, but listen, this is the balance in my life and I'm grateful. I'm thankful that I want to show you how much I appreciate you today with the sermon that God has given me to give you in his word. So again, thank you all very much for all that you have done. It is easy to do this with this body of believers. But I can tell y'all when y'all become a bunch and not a body, all right? <laughs> Sometimes we have a bunch, but this is a good body of believers. So I am humbled and I'm grateful and I'm blessed. Thank you. But it is my honor and it is my privilege to do this, period. Yeah. And all glory be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's give Christ a hand clap of praise. Thank you all. Let's have a word of prayer, please. Father, we thank you and we praise you this morning in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we do bless your name and we ask that your Holy Spirit would come in here, you would teach us, that you would guide us, that you would lead us, that you would draw all of us closer and closer unto you. Lord, hide us behind your cross. Speak, Lord. Your people, we are ready to listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we get into, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, but before we get in that, turn that, I just want to make sure you know this right here, that uh, I know everybody in this room has probably lost someone to COVID-19, or if you don't, you know of somebody who has, but that thing has ravaged the world, and especially America. America represents 4% 
of the world's population. Four. So, I mean, 96% of the world is not American. But we have 20% of the COVID cases in the world. The dead. That, that is ridiculous, guys. That, 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 the numbers don't add up. So my, my point is we've got to use wisdom. I, you know, one something that came to my mind. We've had at least six people in the link to be diagnosed with COVID this past year, but we have not had any death. Thank you, Jesus. So yeah, y'all can praise the Lord on that one. We've had zero fatalities, zero, none, nada. We've lost family members and we've lost friends. And there are more than 515,000 Americans who have died from this disease. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing saving grace. And guys, I want to tell you, it is better. There's a New York variant. There's a California variant. There's a South American variant. There's a Brazil variant. There's a South American variant. There are two UK variants. Listen, for those people who don't know, the, COVID, the, the vaccine didn't come out all of a sudden. It didn't. They work, scientists work on vaccines all the time on uh, airborne illnesses. They do. So they have a platform they jump off of that they do. As a matter of fact, the flu itself, and I'm not comparing the, the flu and COVID. The flu, they have about 20, 30 variants that they test from. So it's just a possibility they might get it right when it's time for the flu vaccine. Did y'all know that? Every year, they're testing for variants. So don't let anybody conf conf confuse and think they just did this thing right now. They didn't just do this in a year. They just did Ebola during the Obama administration. So, you know, they are always working on these airborne stuff. It's nothing new. Don't let the body lies of the world. The last thing I'll say is this. This letter to the church at Corinth, Paul had to be firm because just like today, I sent a few of y'all again, a, a, a text, an email about how the church got inundated with conspiracy theories to the point where QAnon kind of ran the church. And now churches are going back having to right the wrongs that people got off social media that they brought to the church. When the pastors have to confront people about them, people rather believe a lie than believe the truth. They're quitting the church because they want to believe what social media said over the word of God. But then you look at something. The church kind of created a lot of these lies too. Yeah, they did. The, the church kind of created. And so now pastors are being called to defend the good news of Jesus and not of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. It's being called to defend the gospel of Jesus. That trust in Jesus Christ. It's not one person that you trust in, a president or a former president or a certain party. It's not. It is trusting in the word of God. The covenants that we went over in Sunday school. Paul wrote one letter to the church at, at Corinth. And, and Miss Eva, it was, a, it was an awful church. It was an awful church. That's why you don't find churches named 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. You don't. Because it was, well, those who, who you shouldn't find anything like that anyway. But because they were not good churches. They just were not. But when you look at the scriptures, 2 Corinthians, they had gotten better. They had a man in 1 Corinthians who had relations with his father's wife. And from that point, the church, everybody in the church knew about it, but nobody would confront the issue. Paul went there, and not only he kicked the man out of the church, he turned him over to the devil and told him, don't come back until he's ready to repent. When the man repents, in 2 Corinthians, Paul finds out years later, he does repent. And the church is duty-bound to forgive him. But when you play hardball in a church and you tell people God is not just love, he's holy. Now look how the church was not holy, but they were more political than holy. And look at what happened in the world. Look what's happening in the world right now because of politics and not about the word of God. So today, I don't care what the other pastors are doing. I'm going to always stand on the word of God because you cannot go by what the street committee says. You know, conspiracy theories when you. You should know conspiracy theories when you hear them. What does God's word say about it? One of my frat brothers who's a emergency room doctor down in Miami, he told me they're always working on uh, stuff for uh, airborne illnesses, always. Scientists 
It never, ever stops. They're always doing it. They're working on the flu right now for next year. It happens like that, but it's not widely known. So it's not anything they, they publicize. But here's my point, people of God. Paul's going to commend this church, but he's also going to deal with them. Because when you believe God and you take God at his word, you're going to believe God's word over whatever other people are saying out there. I had a talk with a friend of mine yesterday, and she told me about a paper she's working on about integrity. And she made a word, she told me of a word called situational ethics. And that's when you're in a given situation, you got choices. Do you believe what the world says or do you believe what the Bible says? Now, in every situation, you got to trust God and follow Jesus. You've got to. We're going to be tested, people of God. There's no use in having faith if you're not being tested. Your faith is not tested. It must be tested. But here's the two words she said. There's an absolute right and there's an absolute wrong. Yeah, there are not many absolutes in the world, but the word of God is absolute. Yeah, God's word is absolute. That's an absolute right, and he'll tell you what's absolutely wrong. He will. It is the word. So when you got people who have situational ethics, they have ethics at a meeting, but they don't have them in their life. They have them when they're talking to certain folk, but they don't have them when they're talking to other folk. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, you can't, as Christians, we can't have situation ethics. Either we are who got ethic to live ethically. That means to have our conversation, our lifestyle be based upon the word of God. People, we don't have to be so holy with people that we can't just have a decent conversation with people. Just a decent conversation. You don't have to always bring the Bible up. But you can let your conduct, your conversation, be above reproach. And that's what it's all about. Today's lesson, it is entitled, Triumph in Christ. It is the sweet smell of the aroma of victory in Christ. I want to just read these verses. Paul says, furthermore, when I came to, to Troy as a priest, Paul went to Troy as a priest. He really, his, his message he went to Troas, he goes to Macedonia. And when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me by the Lord. He didn't open the door. COVID-19 is an open door for people to hear the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's going to ask you, what did you do to perpetuate his word during COVID-19 and COVID-20? What did you do? What did you do to get his word out there? during COVID-19 and COVID-20. What, what did you do? What did you say? How did you live? What was your conversation? During that time, were you with Christ? And when you get out of it, are you going to leave Christ? Situational ethics. Or is God's word absolute with you that now you're going to do it God's way and it's a lifestyle? It's what you really believe. Paul says, furthermore, when I came to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened to me by the Lord, you want to open the doors when God opened them. When God opens the door, you want to walk through that door. And it may be something you don't want to do, but Christ is calling you to do. I had to rest in my spirit. Paul said, because I, just we talking about in Sunday school, because I didn't find my Titus, my brother, but taking my leave of them, I departed Macedonia. He said, hold on. I'm, 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 I'm not well in my spirit because my friend ain't here, Titus. Titus is an older pastor around Paul's age. Timothy was a younger pastor. That he now he dis, he discipled both of them, but Paul he he couldn't rest because his friend went with him. Where is Titus? He has a message to bring to me from the church of Corinth because he's Troas and Macedonia. So Titus need to come back and tell me he sent him there. What what's going on with the people of Corinth? And are you okay? So that's how it is when you got a friend, you got a covenant. Are you all right? Well, at least give me a call and let me know you're okay. You know, because you know, you know, you know that I'll come and get you. I'll find you. He says he couldn't rest in his spirit. But taking my leave of them, I departed from Macedonia. He goes, Troy asked the Macedonian. But here we go. Now, thanks be to God who always lead us in triumph in Christ and through us. He diffuses 
Let me get my stick. Yeah. But I can't do nothing without my stick here. Now thanks be to God who always is a child in Christ through us. Now thanks be to God who always lead us in triumph, in victory, in Christ. And then he goes through us, and we become a sweet fragrance, diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge. Where are we do it at? Every place. Did he leave out any place? Why is the church leaving out God's word in every place? Come on, somebody, work with me. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ. When you go somewhere, I think Desiree asked in Sunday school, when we, when we go somewhere, we're the fragrance of Christ. We got, no, Deborah asked on Facebook. We, we've got to be smelling like Christ, talking like Christ. That when we go places, people are blessed because we are there. Because we bring the good news of Jesus Christ. For we are to God, this is what you are to God, when God sees you and hears you and know that when, when he gives me direction to tell you to open up your social media, that you do it. Or you hear it, and you say, I hear him, God, but I'm still not going to open up my social media. I'm not going to do it. That doesn't smell good to God. Because if you ask, most people don't tell you, I don't care if you open it up or not. They are. But because God said do it, i just tell you what he said. You can be obedient to me, and you can be obedient to God. Dis you can be disobedient to me. And disobedient God. That's what next week's lesson is setting us up. Loyalty to leaders. When you do it God's way, you get the God result. For we are the God, the fragrance, this is what you are, among those who are being saved and among those who are, being, who are perishing. So God's using you in two ways to talk to other believers out there and to talk to people who need to believe. The people who are already saved and those who need to be saved. So it's not our call, remember? Because God, if, you, if God opened the door, put it like this. If God opened the door for you to have a social media page, just like that, Paul. Paul walked through the door that God opened. But then when he got to his Facebook page, he saw other people in the church who have Facebook pages and, and social media pages, and they are doing everything but what God told him to do. Paul he couldn't rest because his friend wasn't there. So when you go out there and you see some people in the church who should be out there who are not doing it, you shouldn't be able to rest because you see them being disobedient and you know you know better. And you know what? When they are disobedient, does it cause sin to manifest itself in your home and in your marriage and in your job and everything around you because you knew better and you didn't do it. And you didn't confront the people who you know were on a playing tic-tac-toe and not. Oh, they don't play tic-tac-toe anymore. They play Fortnite now. <laughs> people who are playing Fortnite and not doing God's bidding. Amen. I'm, gonna go, I'm just going to give you something and we can go with it. But people, this thing has got to be personal because those who are a sweet fragrance to God that God uses, we'll know each other. We, we will. You'll see those who do not do it. And Terrence, that's the part of being a pastor. Doesn't bother me. I'm not going to say I like it when I have to be hard on people because it's holiness. Because I got to do a funeral on Wednesday and, and do I go to the funeral and tell a lie? No. John did not do what the Bible said. This is what you're going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say. But I know I'm not going to lie for them. To do Mr. Joseph Atencio's funeral is easy to me. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. He loved the Lord. He loved the church. He loved the people. He did. Yeah. It, I mean, to, to a believer's testimony, it speaks for him. All you got to do is just reiterate it to the people. It, go, it goes before you. That, 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 you know, he was an obedient people. Paul is going to make it abundantly clear, and I hope I can be as clear as the scriptures are today. Because you get to determine whether or not you're going to do this right here. We can either be a body or we can be a bunch. Now, a bunch of roses is about 12 roses in a bunch, but they're not one rose. 
They're not. Or you get one rose that really gives the fragrance. We want to be one, one beautiful rose that God said, yeah, that's my rose right there. Go to that place and you'll be healed. You'll be loved on. You'll be forgiven. You understand what I'm saying? Let's go into it, Miss Carmen Baker. The sweet, when I saw that this morning, that man gone. What you gonna do about the fire on the inside? It's off and running, baby. It's gone. The fire had to go. The sweet smell of victory. The difference between winners and losers. Born again because we're born to win. Miss Link, I'm going to go through a few of these things about, about winners and losers. These are not absolutes, but these are just some things that I saw. But how you get to see yourself as a winner or as a loser. Here we go. The winner, he's always a part of the answer. The loser is always a part of the problem. The winner always has a program. The loser always got an excuse. The winner said, let me do that for you. The loser said, that's not my job. That's the... <laughs> That's the body and the bunch. Now, find yourself in here. Yes, an answer for every problem. He sees a problem in every answer. I don't care how much you tell people what God said and what God is doing. They, they're going to still find a problem with it, with what the Word of God says. And I guess, you know, when, when you look at the big picture, people of God, you've got to make sure, just find yourself. You don't have to share that with anybody else. Now, this is not biblical. This is just experience. This is like, this is one man's opinion. It is just one man's opinion. I just happen to agree. Not all of them I'm going to agree with. But for the most part, I do agree with them. But how you look at yourself, we have, we're born again. We're born to win. You know, we're not called to be losers in Christ. We're not. A sweet fragrance to God. That's not losing. We're not a pungent stench to God. No, we smell good to God. Because we're doing a bidding for his son. The winner says it may be difficult, but it's possible. The loser says it may be possible, but it's too hard. It's too difficult. Go back, Carmen. Let's go to the next one. Can somebody please correct this board for me? Terrence, can you at least try? We all want to be winners. We all want to succeed. Why? Then do so many of us struggle indefinitely? It has something to do with how we think, what we focus on, and how we live each moment. Let me say that again. It has something to do, and I agree with the writer, not everything, to do with how we think, what we focus on, and how we live each moment. The writer says, here are a few ideas on why winners win and why losers lose. Amen? Go to the next one, Carmen. All right, here we go. Don't worry about it, Terrence. You know, you know when uh, that demon is designed to Frustrate me. It, it is. But what he don't know, well, I got it on my tablet too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got about that one. I want to go through a few of these. Listen right here. Losers, they fail once and they quit. Winners fail a thousand times and eventually they succeed. Yeah, you can't have that quitted attitude. You got to go over it and over and over and over again. And, and the last time you get ready to quit, God's going to say, I, I brought you through it. And it was never about the difficult situation. It was always about you. Christ don't just love difficult situations. He loved you more than anything. And he proved it by dying on Calvary for you. Losers look for success at the finish line. Winners ex experience success all along the way. God will give you the desires of your heart, Psalm 37. Losers work to make money. You can tell that the money is their God. Winners, they work to make a difference. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and that big money, big bankroll will be back there for you. Y'all say, y'all, somebody need to agree with that one. 
Is that what you're looking for anyway? Losers buy things, winners build things. We're going to build up, again, we're going to build up the kingdom of God. If anybody wants these, I'll email them to you a little later. Losers talk, winners communicate. Losers see things they don't understand, they get discouraged. Winners see things they don't understand, they get curious. Oh, what's going on? Let's That's why I read all the time, because I want to know, I mean. I don't know about this, this vaccine that everybody tripping out about. My frat brothers, look here, man. They work on vaccines all the time. That's what science, that's their job. That's what they do full time. Why they get doctorate level degrees because they're working on this stuff all the time. But then in the background, you don't see them. So when it comes, these people have been working years on something like this anyway. So when it comes, they jump on it. Oftentimes, it does take a little time. But people, somewhere in here, you got to just believe God. You can't tell me miracles don't happen. I saw a miracle walk through the door today. Today. An hour ago, I saw a miracle. Now I take that back. I see a miracle. Come on, somebody. You can't tell me winners and losers. I saw one, but I see one. Come on, somebody. Listen. Losers attempt to conquer the world in one shot. Winners add up all the small victories. Losers expect certain outcomes. Winners prepare themselves for the unexpected. Really doesn't matter how it's going to come out. When Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, the man in him, he's full of God, he's full of man. The man in him saying, I, I take this bitter cup away from me. But the God in him, the spirit in him yielded to the voice of God. Not my will, but your will be done. That God gave him. That God didn't answer him. Just like us, when we, we're having a Gethsemane experience. We want to do our own thing, but not my will, but Lord, what is your will? What, what is your will? What is your will for my life? God, so my will is for you to go to Calvary, for you to go through this nasty, troubled situation. Through the flood or through the fire, he said, I got you. I got you. Water is this high? Fire this hot, hot, hot. God said, I still got you. He knows. Let's go, Carmen. Here's a big one. Losers seek respect. Winners, they earn it. You got to respect them. Yeah. The ones who just trying to get everybody to be their buddy and be their pal and just be the most likable person around, that's not what it's all about. Respect is earned. You earn people's respect. Yeah. Commitment, dedication. Nobody's going to give it to you. Losers, they review their options. Winners, they act on decision. Decision making. The church, the missing link, y'all got to know how to make good decisions. That's why we put before you what we put before you. Make a decision. Mess up, fall down. Get up, we talk about it. Why you did what you did, where you made mistakes at. Get up, do it again a hundred times. Someone there, you get it right. And that's when I say they're ready to take it over. You can't tell me God ain't got apostles and teachers and pastors and evangelists in that group. Because he does. But they got to see themselves as winners in Christ. They've got to believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And because of that, there is hope. Yeah. Losers want to get ahead of others. Winners. You see them, they want to help others get ahead. They don't, it's all about me being a team player. It's that body and that bunch again. We get to choose which one we're going to do. Losers follow people's definition of success. They go to Google and they say, Google, what is the definition of success? When they just need to open up the book and say, Lord, what's your definition of success? The last will be first. The first is going to be last. Be God's servant. And go from being a servant to be his friend. To being an heir, a joint heir with Christ as his son. Or as his daughter when you can cry, Abba. Abba, Father, Daddy, thank you. Now, no longer you call me servant. I'm a pretty good friend. But I'm a great son. I'm a great daughter. 
Let's go to sermons, Carmen Baker. There are a lot more guys. I'm, I'm just going to give you those right now. <clears throat> All right, here we go. When Paul's talking this thing, he's in Troy, as in Macedonia, and he's trying to find what's going on in Corinth, and he sent Titus. And he said, what's the arena of the victory? Where did the victory happen at? So you'll know that you are a winner. The victory happened at Calvary, guys, at the cross. And this is what Satan knows. Was that Tim? Was that you were telling that? Let's say should take advantage of you. I, t- I was talking to somebody about this right here. Let's say should take advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. Satan knows that the people of God are going to run into trouble, and they ain't going to open up the Bible, and they're not going to listen to godly counsel. They're not going to have people pray for it. They're not going to confess their fault because pride got them so jacked up. They're not going to tell what's really wrong with them. And then they think they want to work for the Lord to do God's bidding. No. You won't obey the basic commands of the word of God. How can you lead or teach? You can't. Because you are ignorant of Satan and his devices. He wants you to stay on your island locked up by yourself. God never called any of us. He never called any of us to be an island, ever. He never, te- never wanted you to go through your issues alone by yourself. But these worldly people who don't know Christ, that's what they do. They run and shut up and don't talk to anybody. That's, an- that's the antithesis of what the Bible is all about. That's why God says, love God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And when he talks to you, he tells you, go talk to somebody who can listen to you. Here are his devices. Number one, he tries to distort the truth. He denied the truth. He'll cover up the victory at G, uh, that Jesus has already won. The victory is already won. It was won at Calvary. The victory was won at the cross. But he don't want you to know that. That's why the church has got to teach that. Your victory is already there. It's a done deal. It is. He don't want you to understand. That's why he don't want us to teach. He don't want teachers to teach because then you might get an understanding. Solomon says in the book of wisdom, probably as far as in wisdom is the principal thing, and all you're getting, get an understanding. That God wants you to, I don't preach prosperity gospel, but God wants you to prosper. He wants you to have good things, a good future, a good plan. He does. Don't put wealth and prosperity over pleasing God. But God wants you to be happy. He wants you to be full of joy. That ongoing to Christ and what happened, bestowed believe, is the power by his blood. When you look at when you look at the scriptures and what they say, let me get this. He does not want you to understand that belonging to Christ and what Christ has bestowed to believers is power by his shed blood. When Christ died for your sins and mine, it released, he said, that we're going to find out in Bible study an even greater power in the Holy Spirit. He's not greater in terms of the personality, but that he can be in more places than one time. The person of Christ had an assignment to come and to give us. The Holy Spirit has an assignment to come and to end well. Jesus has left, but his spirit lives in us because of the Holy Spirit. That's the beauty of the whole thing. 1 John 3 and 8 says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, Son of God, was manifested, he came in the flesh, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Christ came that he might destroy the works of the devil. Manifested means that he was here in the bodily. He was here bodily. He was here in person. He's not coming back bodily until the church gets raptured up and until the, the church leaves, the Holy Spirit leaves, Christ will meet us in the air at the rapture. But he won't step foot for another seven years on earth. And when he comes back for the millennium, 
the devil will be bound up. He'll be bound up for a thousand years. We'll live, excuse me, peacefully with Christ. And after that, the devil will be released after a thousand years. He will be defeated at the battle of Armageddon, and it won't be no long battle. It won't be an hour or two, but it's going to be short and it's going to be sweet. And then Christ is going to the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's going to judge death, unbelievers, and hell. Now, how do you think Christ is going to talk to them? Oh, come on, death. Come on, hell. He knows the devil. He knows death, and he knows hell. Get up, death. Come on, hell. Get up. Yeah, because he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. His job is not to be nice. Now, nah, it is to tell them, you betrayed everybody. You send these people to hell. And now death is with you. All these souls are unbelievable because they believe you more than they believe me. And now your sentence, it is the lake of fire. Satan, death and hell will be thrown to the lake of fire. This world will be destroyed by fire, like the similar to was with the water. And we'll have a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem. And I'm still living on the north side. <laughs> I am. Where's snow? Anybody want to come to my spot? Bring your rain gear because it's going to be rain and snow all the time. People, see, but you, you, you got to have a mindset. I mean, talk, when you talk to him, tell him. I mean, I, he may not give that to me. But he know what I want to do. I'm, I, I, if I can talk to Lord, I say, Lord, look, I want to play in the band. I want to be the drummer. I have a big old nice house up on the hill with a lot of snow. It's going to be a long way up, so people are going to be tired. They're trying to come visit me at my house, so they ain't going to come too much. But listen, you, you got to talk to the Lord. Was that you talking about an intimate or personal relationship with the Lord? Intimate and personal. I mean, talk to him. Talk to, he is Lord, and he's Savior, he's Master, he's Christ. Talk with him. Point number four, coming back, Jesus destroys the devil. It, it means that to render him ineffective. The devil is still the ruler of this world, Jay. And of all the answers on your paper in John 12, that's one you left off about Satan being the ruler of this world. He is the ruler of this world. But by the way, he can't do anything. Unless he get God's permission. He can't touch you. He can't interfere with you. He can't stop. But he has been rendered ineffective. How is it the devil sits on authority, but the church won't? Somebody explain that one to me. Because the devil can't touch you unless he get God's permission. Loyalty to leaders. How are you loyal to me? And in the first, when I need you the most, you're going to hit me in the back. Come on now. You walked away, Christ has rendered him ineffective. You render relationships ineffective when you do this stuff. Here we go. Jesus destroyed the devil. It means he rendered him ineffective. It made, it, made, it made him of no effect. He couldn't affect you. Even though he can huff and he can puff, he cannot blow your house down. He can't because it's built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. It means to make of no effect. It means to make void. Christ wiped out the power of death at Calvary, at the cross, the arena where it happened. Christ defeated the devil at the cross. That's why it's important if you go to the cross. If the devil is attacking you, God allowed it. Go to the cross. God, what is this going for? What, what is this happening? He said, look, I need you to go through this, but I got you. I'm with you because somebody is going to see my face or hear my voice through what you go through. And you know one of the greatest things, trouble situation, we need to ask people to forgive us. And it hurts you all the more when people who are your friend, they know they need to ask for forgiveness, and they don't do it. And I, it's a simple act to say, will you forgive me for not being the, the Jonathan David friend that I said that I was? Please forgive me because I want to restore our relationship. And one of our core values, Mr. Nico, is relationships that are real, that I call you a son in the ministry, and you accept it as a spiritual father, as Paul did with Timothy, disciple and teaching. That's what it's all about. Don't ever get so haughty that people can't teach you. 
You know, Miss Anime, I was talking with Pastor Dave last night. And I don't know if you know Deidre Grid. Deidre passed yesterday morning in her 50s. True saint, I mean soul. And I said, Pastor, how you doing? He said, I don't know. And I just wanted to cry. You know, because I, I felt his pain about losing a friend and about him losing parishioners. And seeing God does something to the pastor's heart where he, he personalizes stuff with these people that he's willing to give us all for them. And he said he didn't know how he was doing. And then he, I heard Miss Anson tell Ken and Jerry, I said, hello, let me know she got it because, you know, I just said, well, all right, man, uh, I talked to your money. I, I just, I couldn't talk and he couldn't talk. You know, because it hurts like that. When, 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 when you have relationships that are real, God does, he does, Jerry just said it, he connects you soul to soul. And you are connected by this strand of three cord, and it is Christ. That death hurts us, but death does not have the final say so. We know Deity's in heaven right now, period. We know she's with the Lord, be absent from this body, be present with the Lord. But it hurts us when a saint dies. It hurts us we got to do a funeral on when. It hurts us we lose people to call. It hurts. But that's not how the story ends. Because three days later, he rose again. She's with the Lord. She's with the Master. We got to keep pushing. Paul says it's the arena. Christ wiped out the power of, of the devil. The devil still exists. But remember this, people. He is destroyed. His power is taken away. He's just the devil. That's all. He's just the evil devil. That's all. But his power is taken away from him. He can only do as much as the Lord allows. That's why, people, you must be born again. You must be born again. The devil has been overcome by Christ's death on Calvary. The arena that the battle is fought, that you need to fight all your battles, at the cross. Give us somebody you trust who you can tell what's really going on in your life and in your heart. That's why everybody needs a pastor, does it, right? Who cares? Who really does care whether you're okay or not? Really. It's requirement of God. And some people don't have to try and go it on their own because they think they're so tough. And then they mess up the, the, the word of God and they become a bad witness for God all because they want to be tough. And they're counterfeit Christians because they do it their way and not God's way. And they just destroy the name of Jesus. The arena. Just tell everybody everywhere that let us go to the cross. The most, one of the most difficult times I've had as a pastor was last night, to, to hear the hurt and pain in my pastor coming up to my appreciation, but just to hear the hurt and the pain in him because it's real. Because you have to literally take somebody that you know, a person, and commit them to the ground. And you trust God's word and that spirit is going back to him. But Lord, did I do my part in telling this body that they have a soul, and somewhere their soul has got to go. And there ain't no limbo, no soul just lingering around here. Either it's in the non-smoking or it's in the smoking section. Right, Heaven or hell, that's where it is. No limbo, ain't no souls floating around and a little transparent ghost running around. That's not it. It's either one or the other. The arena is Calvary. Let's go, Carmen Baker. The area of the victory. How, where's the area? Underscore and emphasize these two words. It's always, it's all the time. And it's everywhere. It's always happening. Let me read this in the book so y'all can understand that God said this, the area of your life, if you ain't got victory in your life, it's your fault. Thank you, Lord. Say it, say it again. This is what the Bible says. Verse 14, now thanks be to God who always he lead us in triumph. Triumph is victory. The sweet smell of victory. He always leads us in thanks be to God who always lead us in triumph in Christ. He don't just take you, but he take you because you took Christ. And then it's through us he diffuses it fragrance of his knowledge where everywhere you go 
He didn't leave out a place, and he didn't leave out a time. All the time, anywhere. All the time. That's how the Christians should know. The people should know the Christians know the world. All the time, anywhere. Pam told me last night, you need to turn the phone off. I said, Pam, I need the phone. I need some help with people in the ministry. But I take the phone calls all day and night. Nico, you just read the, the, the thing. Till I drop. Yeah, I take the call. It's not the phone. And I appreciate you trying to love me enough to say, turn the phone off. It's not the phone. There's a lot of ministry work that needs to happen. We need help. The harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. We need people that we can trust who really will do God's bidding for them. The Bible says it's always we got victory and every place we go. The area of victory. Paul didn't leave anything out. Always and everywhere are the areas of victory. Always and everywhere. Those are the areas of victory. If you don't have victory in your life, is it because you won't take Christ into it? You keep doing it your way and keep getting your results because you won't bring Christ into it. Then if you talk to me and I bring it into it, you don't want to talk to me anymore. That's how I go. I don't take his call. I don't want to talk to him. Yeah, because they know I'm going to bring Jesus into the thing. But that's my job. That's my assignment. I mean, look at what Paul said. He's the pastor. He said always and every time, every place. He does not leave anything out. So don't get mad at me because I bring it in. I'm not trying to be so holy that I'm bringing Christ in. But I know he's the answer. That he's the answer here. This does not mean we'll have a life of ease and luxury and perpetual health. Or that we'll be free from pain or we'll be free from worry. I don't mean that. You still can have pain, you still can have worry. You know, you still can have conflict, and you're still gonna have difficulty in this world. Even though you got Christ. But baby, he'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. And I tell you, as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, as a grandfather, man, look here, there's nothing like the power of peace. When you can get peace, you got something. I mean, peace in the midst of the storm, when you got it, you got it. 2 Corinthians Chapter 4, going to go two chapters over, two verses, I mean, two chapters over. It says, everybody, most Christians can agree with this right here. We are hard pressed on every side. But you know what? We're hard pressed on this side, that side, this side, that side. But it said we're not crushed. Y'all hear that? That you're hard pressed, but you're not crushed. He goes a little deep and said, we are perplexed. This thing don't make any sense for me, Lord. It just doesn't make any sense. But I'm not desperate. I'm not in despair. Because I know you got it, Lord. How many people are so desperate, they go and try and get it or do it their way? He said, we are persecuted. But as Jesus on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He said, we are not forsaken. Even though it hurts like nobody's business, we are not forsaken. We are literally and actually struck down, but we're not destroyed. We, our head may be bloody, but it's unbowed. Yeah, we might get knocked down, but the Bible says we're not destroyed, baby. Is that the best you can do? Is that the best that you have? Yeah. Jesus, how do my light wait for me while I go do your bidding? Listen, if God's got you in a trouble situation, seriously, so God handle this. Because I need to witness somebody. Show me somebody to talk to while you handle my pain. Try him on that one. So God, handle this. Because I need, to, I need to witness somebody. I need to pray with somebody. But I need to do something. You said you got this. You said that the area and the arena of victory was at Calvary. So it was done deal then. It was nailed to the cross. Let him handle it. We're to my advanced level Christianity. Believe in faith. Here's my point from my heart. You can't have victory unless you got opposition. My friend is not supposed to be my opposition. My friend's supposed to be my friend. 
your opposition, as he said in chapter 2, it is the devil. It's the devil. Your opposition is not your family. It's not your co-workers. It's the devil. It's the enemy working against you or working in them against you. You cannot have victory unless you have, there's the opposition. You cannot know victory unless you have problems. You got to count it all joy when you go through these things. Unless you know the headaches and the heartaches, unless you have trials, unless you have difficulties, and the big word is perplexity. A lot of stuff is just going on, 500 moving pieces, you can't figure them out. But God can put that puzzle together for you. When you don't know which way is up, God can put it together for you. Are you willing to allow it? The arena of victory, it is at the cross. The area of victory is always, all the time, everywhere you go. No defeated Christian. It's an oxymoron. They don't go well together. They don't fit in. They don't. Just doesn't fit. If you, uh, you are who God says that you are. No more being defeated Christian. <laughs> Point number six. And the Christian life is not a subtraction of problems from life. Have you ever noticed that? It, it's, it's not a subtraction of problems from you. It's not. It is the addition of the Holy Ghost power. Run, why does this thing keep coming up about the Holy Ghost power? Because the Christian will not tap into the Holy Ghost power. They just won't. They will not tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what, people, we don't have any power. But the hope of glory, Christ in us, that's where the dynamite power, and it, dunamis, dynamite power, that's where it comes from. It's supposed to blow up the mess and the trash in life. The Christian life is not a subtraction problem from your life. It is the addition of the power to meet these problems. I really had that one for Tuesday night, Ron, but I said, Lord, so now I'll say it now. That's why Paul says, thanks be unto God that causes us always to triumph in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're lost and you're defeated because you're not in Jesus. And see, when you're going through this, I tell you, let's, go, let's get back to Christ. Let's get back to the word. That's when you get on point. You don't have to run away, you don't have to hide, you don't have to deny, you don't have to quit the church. You can just stay on point. The arena of victory is Calvary. We preach the cross of Jesus Christ. To those of us being saved, it's the power of God. To those of us that are, those people, not us, those people that are perishing, they're just lost. It's death, it's destruction. They're perishing, they're dying. But to those of us being saved, we know we got to continue moving forward. The last thing I want to tell you about is the aroma of victory. Now, this one all for God right here. This one for the Lord. When we realize that the arena of victory is the cross, and the area of victory is every place, all the time, anybody. And people, that might not be just you getting your way. It may be you going in and getting knocked out, but did the word of God come across? Was the Holy Spirit present? Now, the last one is the, it is the aroma. What does God say it smells like? Here's what it says. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Why? For we are to God. This is who, who we are to God. Don't give a definition of who you are to God. Let God give you the definition of who you are to him. When you make the statement, I am who you say I am. Answer this question right here. For we are the God, the fragrance of Christ. How are you the fragrance of Christ? If you didn't get your way, do you walk around with a non-speaking, nasty, bad attitude because you didn't get your way? How is that a good fragrance to God? How is that a good fragrance to a friendship? How is that a good, relationship, good fragrance to a relationship? For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved. People look to us because they know you're going to bring the word of God. They know you're going to bring prayer. They know you're going to bring a sense of heart. 
They know you're going to sit with them like Job friends sat with him seven days. Seven days, seven days. They sat with him. But they know you're going to love on them. You're going to comfort them with the word of God to those that are being saved. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. That's the part I didn't know, Ron. That even, here, here's the deal. You know you're a sweet fragrance to God when you do it with believers. You're an even sweeter fragrance when you do it with people who are perishing. When you do it with the lost. That's why he called us to be evangelical Christians. I, and here's why, what got me with it, Ron. I, I looked at it as a mission and a commission to go do it. Not that God is well pleased. Because some lost folk, you just don't want to deal with them. But it's not your calling. Well, anymore. remember, your life does not belong to you. You go and you do it. But that's how you become a sweet fragrance to God. The aroma of victory. The reign of victory is Calvary. The area of victory is always and in every place. Call me back, you with me? Point number one. Point number two. The aroma, it is the fragrance of your faith. When the trouble got going, did, the, did your faith get going also? Did you run and hide? The aroma is the fragrance of faith. That even though you just went out there and got embarrassed in the name of Jesus, your embarrassment was at, in the name of Jesus. You went to somebody's porch and you were trying to take Christ and they cussed you out and told you, get, them out, get off their porch. You still did what God told you to do. And you might get ridiculed and cussed out. But did you do what the Lord told you to do? Amen. Did you do it? So that's the fragrance. The aroma is the fragrance of faith, 2 Corinthians 2 and 15. For we are in a God, a sweet savior, sweet savior of Christ. Do you know what we were when we lived this way? We are innocent. Yeah. I learned that one last week. That you're innocent, even though people don't want you to say what you say or do what you do. God declares you innocent. Remember, justification is when God declares you righteous. Yeah, because he's only working to say you're righteous. That even though it didn't work out the way you wanted to or God wanted to, you still did it because God told you to. When God sees us enter into the victory of Jesus, Pam, can you put this on the face on the, on the page? When God sees us entering into the victory of Jesus, see, because God watches. His eyes are going to and fro, and he sees who's walking in victory in Christ. He knows. When God sees us entering into the victory of Jesus, when God sees us living in triumph and victory, not death and defeat, that is an aroma. Because when you're living in death and defeat, that's an aroma too. It's a stench to God. But the sweet smell of victory, when God says, I'm well pleased with you and what you're doing, a sweet smell and aroma to the lost. Are you willing to go because the Lord said go? Amen. And it is indeed the sweet smell of victory that this world needs to see. Yes, it is. Now, we're not defeated. We don't believe in the vaccine. We believe in the, God, we believe in the God who helped create, who created the vaccine. That's what we believe in. Yeah, we don't put, it, put any faith in this chair I'm sitting in. We put, a, we put faith in the God who's holding up the chair that I sit in. The house that you live in. You don't put your faith in the house. Nah, you put your faith. You know, even unbelievers know when you bless your food, you need to say your grace. That means you need to thank God for your food. So see, they do know. They really do know. They really do know. They do know. People, the sweet, the sweet smell of victory is our faith in Jesus Christ in any and all situations. For the past year, the Lord has carried us on angels' wings. Lord, if you'll continue to carry us, we'll follow you. Listen, guys, we want to let people back in. People want to come back in, but the time is not right yet. But I tell you what, we can put that tent up out there. I don't know how far the car will reach that the microphones can be on. We can go try and get us a 100-foot cord, Pam. Yeah, that, that is the store. We, we, let's try. But we want to make sure people get God's word. 
it's vital important that the, the microphones at the church be on because that's what people who listen on the radio listen in. We got a greater audience on the radio that you don't see on Facebook. Amen. To God is good. Amen. Tell people. Tell, tell people about Jesus. Amen? Amen. I, it is my joy, the sweet smell of victory, to run this race, to run up them steps. Carmen, I can't run up the steps nowadays like I used to could, but I run up the steps with this crew right here any day of the week. Let's keep running up steps, guys. Sometime we get a little old and get back issues and knee issues and that kind of stuff. We need to slow down a little bit. But we're going to keep going in the name of Jesus. Amen? Because one day we're going to reach the top of the stairway. We're going to reach the top of Jacob's ladder. And we know what the end is going to be. Yes, sir. We're going to keep climbing, God. Let's keep climbing. Let's keep going. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep pressing. But in the end, let's keep praying. Amen? Let's give the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I, I count it all joy that we can stand in your presence, Lord, and we can discuss your darling son, Jesus. And Lord, it is by his amazing saving grace that we are saved. And Father, we do pray for the lost, for the unsaved. We pray for those who do not know you as Lord, nor know your Savior. Lord Jesus, please allow salvation to come to this place. Save someone's soul in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray your word is going forth, that somebody's heart has been touched, that their ears have been enlightened, Lord, that their hearts are enlightened, that they want a deeper, closer walk with you. Father, thank you for an obedient, good, strong church. And Lord, we pray you'd order our footsteps as per your word. Thank you, Jesus, for protecting us from the COVID, Lord. We pray for all the people that are still dealing with it, Lord. We do. We, we uplift our brothers and sisters who are wrestling with it. But Lord, help us to make good decisions, to follow the protocol, to believe in you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are and for all that you do. Lord, we pray for the lost and unsaved, for anyone who do not know, do, do not know you as Lord, nor know you as Savior. Allow them to send us a message, Lord, so we can share the good news of Jesus with them. Father, we love you so much. We thank you and we praise you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. And the saints of God did say, Amen. 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 Let's give Jesus one more hand clap of praise. I'm going to ask you if you stand up with us, please. And since we've been talking about these visions and dreams, we're going to ask people to look out today and see how we, today, let's see how we can make arrangements to have communion outside. It's about time, amen. amen. It is about that time. The weather's kind of breaking in our favor. Uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see how we can do what it is we, we desire to do here. Find somebody you can point at and tell them this right here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number six, 24 through 26. Father, Lord, in the sweet and holy name of Jesus, Lord, that's the sweetest name we know, Lord. Lord, we uplift the name of Jesus. You promised us that if Jesus be lifted up, he draw all men unto himself. So, Lord, we uplift the name of Jesus. Thank you for a good day on covenants, Lord, and the sweet smell of victory, Lord Jesus. Father, now we pray you go before us, that um, everything that's said and done will bring you glory and bring you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, before y'all leave, guys, I'm so sorry. We're taking up an offering for the Atencio family. If, if you can, uh, we just want to help them with some things. If anybody can, please make an offering so that we can try and help them. If you can't, we love you even more, and we pray that one day you can. But we just want to try and bless them. If you can, fine. If you can't, leave it alone. Thank you, thank you. Here it is right here.